Hi, I'm Judy Hainer with Bernina. Welcome to Bernina Creative Studio. Uh, in this session, I want to talk to you about a designer tool that's included on the 880, which is called the Shape Designer. Um, it's, a, it's a tool that lets us take a design and lay it out uh, in different shapes, such as a square, a circle, um, there's also a half circle, a heart. All of those um, are available on the 880 in the Shape Designer, and there's a total of nine shapes. You can adjust the size of them, so really it gives you a lot more shaping op opportunities. Now, don't worry if you have another machine. There is the possibility to do something similar. You just wouldn't have the tool that puts it all in order for you. You'd have a few more steps. So the basics of how to do it on the 880 are for this tool's benefit, but really on the others, you could lay it out as well. So in the directions that I include in this, in this lesson, there's a little bit of information about that for the others. The one thing that I did do with this design um, that was created using the shaping tool, it is stitched in the maxi hoop. So it's a fairly nice size design and it's used to create the um, pillow wrap over here. So it's an opportunity to change out your decor. Maybe it's with seasons, maybe it's just with color schemes because you know sometimes we change things out at home. The other thing about the shape designer as well is then you can personalize it. As you can see here, I added lettering to it. So there's a lot of wonderful things that can happen with the Shape Designer. And with that being said, I'd like to take you to the machine and show you how the Shape Designer works. The design that I'm using is from a collection called Celestial Lights uh, by, from Amanda Murphy. And the collection number is 80300, and I'm using design number 40. It was a fun little flourish. And you know, on the machines, we have the ability to go in and edit those designs and get rid of parts and pieces we don't want to use. So that's what we're going to do here. I have the design up on the screen. We're going to be using the maxi hoop. So I'm going to go over to the hoop menu and scroll down and find the maxi hoop and make sure that comes up. Turn on the grid. So I have the ability to see placement lines. Okay, let's close that. Now, with the design on the screen, what I want to do is go up to the information I and open that up so I have my editing tools. We're going to scroll down and we are going to ungroup this design. Now it's selected here, so we'll touch the minus, so we're ungrouping. And now all the pieces of the design are on the layers here. We're going to group together the first three layers because that's what we're going to delete. So with layer number one chosen, I'm going to touch plus for group and touch it again to group. And now I have two layers. I have the star portion and I have the flourish that we want to use. So with the bottom one selected, I'm going to touch the information I and go to the trash can and delete this. So we'll confirm that deletion. Now all we have is the part we want to play with in the shaping tool. So we're not going to make any other changes to it here. We'll go right into shaping. And that's the symbol here that has uh, three squares and they're kind of connected. So it's a half circle shape. We'll touch that icon and it always defaults to the square. So we can go in and we can choose a number of different shapes. I'm just going to kind of scroll through each one because you can then see how it just changes even how the orientation of things start when we get going with selection of the shape we want to use. So there's quite a little bit of a variety. It doesn't mean that every shape is the best for this design. Um, and it's, it's smaller designs are probably where you'll, where you'll be more successful. The other thing that's a really uh, fun thing to do with the shaping tool is to use the sewing stitches in here as well. So there's a lot of possibilities to create new designs just using pieces and parts of another one. So scrolling up, I'm going to choose the square. That's the one we're going to be using today. We're going to increase here the number of motifs. So we can decide how many repeats of this design we want to use in our shape. And we're going to keep touching the plus until we have eight on the screen. Now it's not laid out at all like my pillow shows. So we have the ability to change the size of the shape. And we can do it um, proportionally or we could unlock this and we could turn this into a rectangle if we wanted to. So we could do each one independently. We're gonna keep it um, grouped together or proportional. So we're going to go ahead and reduce the size 
and it's about 65% that I found pretty nice to where your designs kind of interact. You still get a secondary design. It's not a perfect shape. It's, it gives you a lot of interest as you add your corners and, and then the other sides. So with that, this design is complete, but I also wanted to just share a couple more things about Shape Designer while we're here. We have a quick 90 degrees, which if I use that for this design, it really would not, um, it would not be the best choice, but you can see it allows you to try different layouts within the shape you've selected with your design and its orientation. The other thing is if I had, um, my designs are um, symmetrical, but if my design wasn't symmetrical, if I use the mirroring tool, it'll alternate every other design in the number of motifs I have selected. Here we wouldn't see a change, but if it was not a symmetrical design, you would. So those are some of the cool things that you can do in the Shape Designer. Now that we have ours laid out, we can go ahead and confirm that. And it's right here on the screen. What I'd like to do so it's easier to see is I'm gonna go into the color uh, sequencing. And with that, let's just go into the um, color wheel and just give this a little bit of a darker hue so that I can see it better on the screen and so can you. So that's an easy way to make things more visible when you're trying to work with this. This is ready to go, but we wanna add our lettering. So we'll go ahead and we'll touch the add design uh, option. It comes back to where my design was stored, but we're going to choose the machine and the alphabet folder. And then we're going to use uh, number nine, which is Alice. That's the font we're using for this. And we're gonna type in an uppercase joy, J-O-Y. Confirm that. Now, I'd like to see on screen if this fits this space pretty well. So we're gonna to touch the Zoom Plus, see if I need to make any changes to it. Touch the bottom layer and you can see that it fits into that space quite nicely. So really there's no need for a change. I'm going to select that layer though, um, cause I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how a design stitches out. We're going to go into the rearrange the stitching sequence option on the machine, which is right here. It's got a little symbol, one, two, three. And when you're stitching embroidery designs, if you can control it, it's best to stitch from the center out. And then they also say finish as you go. Because of the push and pull of fabric, when the stitches start um, working into the fabric, if you start at the center, you end up pushing the fabric out instead of getting a bunched up look in the center because you've done the perimeter of the design first. So it's kind of a good practice to, if you can rearrange that, some designs it's pretty hard, but where we've added lettering, it's very easy to do this. So with layer two selected, which is the lettering, I'm gonna move it down. So it's the first thing that stitches, and then it'll continue after that to stitch the, the design itself. Uh, go to the small I again, and I would like to group this together. And now it's all together on one layer. We'll zoom back out. And that's how easy it is to make a design using the shaping tool. So it's always a great idea. We're going to close this window to save your design. So we'll go to the selection folder and we'll go ahead and touch the save icon. And we'll store it on the machine. So in case something goes along the way, you have always got your backup and you're ready to go. Plus, if you like it that well, you might want to recall it for another stitch out on another day. This is ready to stitch. I'm going to go ahead and touch the uh, needle icon, which takes us to the stitching screen. And it's telling me to, uh, to attach a hoop and I don't have the hoop ready yet. So now that's the next step I wanna show you is a little bit about hooping this design. Okay, the design is all set up over here, but what we're gonna do right here is talk about the hooping and a, a product that I use that helps uh, support the stitches better. So first I've marked the horizontal and vertical center of my pillow wrap. This is cut to size for the most part. After embroidery, I usually size it down just a little bit. So that's ready to go and I'll, I'll show it when I hoop. 
but I want to show you a product that I used and it's called Fusible Woven and it's a cutaway and what it, it's not a stabilizer per se what it does is help um, give us a support to the fabric so especially when we're using things like these um, satin stitches that you it'll prevent the puckering that might happen with some of that so it's really a good product to use for certain fabrics especially lighter weight ones um, and it just gives a lot more support to whatever's happening if you're using multi-hooping it might be a solution as well um, so it's a great way to use it now you still need a stabilizer with it this is just a I, I would call it a way to beef up your fabric so that it can support dense stitches a little bit better. So that's the fusible woven and I have you apply that to the wrong side of your in your fabric that you're embroidering so it fuses right on and then the stabilizer that I'm using is a poly mesh and I've got two layers and the reason I'm using two layers is again this is um, the satin stitch that's happening with this flourish part of the design and when you trim this it will not show through uh, to the right side plus if you were to wash the the pillow wrap you know heaven forbid things do get dirty once in a while you'll have some stabilizer behind those satin stitches and it won't they won't get distorted through washing and drying and those kinds of things so that's the stabilization that i chose to use in this project the uh, template is going to get positioned onto the fabric and get it lined up because we kind of want this to be centered i've got the maxi hoop uh, exterior outer hoop opened and ready to go and what I really like to do is put the inner hoop on top and go ahead and grab this make sure it's lined we're going to use pinpoint placement so if it's not perfect we can get it there and then lift it over and go ahead and pop it into the hoop and again we love this system for closing our hoops we just turn it make sure everything's secure until it clicks once and then give a little press to make sure the hoop is just a smidge beyond. I'll show you here as I get my fingers working. You want it just a smidge beyond the hoop. Remove the template and we'll be ready to go over to the machine now and uh, attach this and get ready to do our embroidery. Now that we've got it all hooped and ready to go, we've attached it to the machine. So let's position the design to make sure we have it centered. So we're going to touch the information eye and then go ahead and select pinpoint placement. I love this feature because it gets us exactly spot on where we want to be. It's needle point accurate. We're going to use the centering dot. And as you can see, it's going to be just a little bit off. I can tell that. So we'll use the multifunction knobs to align to the center. I use the uh, hand wheel to rotate it down. And wow, that's really pretty darn close. One little tick this way and I think we're there. Spot on. Love it when that happens. So now we'll go ahead and set that point. And now there's a yellow halo around it says it's set and ready to go. We're gonna close this window and we're going to go to the stitching screen. At the stitching screen, there are a few things we wanna make sure are activated and selected. The first thing is to cut between jumps. And I do have that highlighted and activated. Also in the settings of the machine, I went into the embroidery settings and changed it uh, down to one millimeter from the default of six. If I had not made that change, it would not cut between the lettering. We definitely want that to happen. The other thing that um, I have activated is to sequence colors together with the a motif here which is very faint on the screen hard for you to see but there's eight motifs in our shaping the machine sees them individually and stops after every single one even though the colors are the same for each one so if we do sequence like colors then it will continue to stitch all eight of the motifs without stopping and that keeps you from not having to hit the stop start all the time. So those two things are active and ready to go. And with that, we are ready to begin stitching our design. So I'm gonna begin stitching. And in just a minute, I'll show you the finished design. As you can see, the design is completely stitched out and ready to go. I've done a different colorway on this one than I did on this one, but let's remove it from the hoop. And I'll set these off to the side because we're done with that hoop for now. And then what we would do next is trim away around the design your excess stabilizer. 
And then if you use the OESD press cloth and put this down on the press cloth and then put another cloth on top of it and press, then you'll have your design all nicely uh, situated and all any puckers that might have come from stitching, which this looks pretty good because we use fusible woven, uh, would go away with the press cloth. Now, the next thing would be to create um, your pillow wrap. So I would square this up and in the in the handout that comes with this uh, month's information, embroidery information, it gives you those dimensions on and it's just trimming it up a little bit. The length is pretty much the same, it's the width that we change. I also have directions for your lining, which then also creates a faux trim. So it's cut a little bit wider than your actual wrap. Um, that's just sewn on or surged on, whichever is your choice, to the sides. I used a half an inch seam allowance. And then everything about this is really faux. <laughs> so on the back, of course we hemmed here, and this is um, faux done also. There's no buttonholes. I just stitched it in, into position after I got the measurements for my pillow. This is a 16 inch pillow form that I, that I covered. And then I just went ahead and sewed on the decorative buttons using the number 18 button sew on foot, which is another one of my favorite feet. And then your pillow wrap is complete and ready for gift giving or changing out your decor. Um, really, it's your turn to go have fun with this. Change the word. Monogram would work as well. And it's a great way to kind of play with the shaping tool and allow you to have some fun with your machine. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this session and we'll see you next time. Happy stitching.